Hello and welcome to the Fit and Free podcast. This is a podcast for women who want it all, to feel strong and confident in their bodies, as well as enjoying a sneaky mug on a Friday night. I'm an exercise physiologist and sports nutritionist here to teach you how to achieve your body goals without food and your body controlling your life. So let's jump in. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Fit and Free Potty. I'm so excited. I'm sitting here with a beautiful brewed cup of tea. There's nothing better than a black tea with a dash of milk. Um, And I'm sitting here so excited to record this episode for you guys. I am absolutely loving your feedback. I keep sending me your DMs, keep sharing it on your Instagram stories. I love to see who's listening and I love to know what your biggest takeaways are. It like literally the reason why I sit down and record these every week is to help you guys build a healthy relationship with food, achieve your body goals, and ultimately just feel so fit and so free. So please keep, keep sharing. I am really excited about today's episode because like, as you already probably know, I am a massive foodie. I love food and I love talking about healthy relationships with food and fueling our bodies correctly with the right amount of nutrients and the right amount of macros and for not demonizing food and not feeling guilty about eating anything. But I also really, really love to talk about exercise. And if you don't know, like exercise was my first love and my first passion. That's where I started my whole journey with my study in a Bachelor of Exercise Physiology. So I love, love, love to talk about it. So in today's episode, we're going to be diving deep into exercise and we're going to be talking through some of the biggest things, why biggest mistakes, I guess, people are making with their exercise, because it's this whole thing, right? Like people show up consistently with their exercise, yet their body doesn't reflect the effort that they put in. And it's like, yes, I'm all here for exercise to make us feel good, exercise for our mental health, exercise for our cardiovascular health. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I used to work as an exercise physiologist and I used to prescribe exercise to people with heart disease and people with diabetes and things like that. So I absolutely know the health benefits and the amazing effects that exercise can have for someone. But at the same time, it's like, well, if you do have a body composition goal and there is nothing wrong with that, like, fuck yeah, let's look good in a bikini. Like, who doesn't want that? It's like, well, why put in so much effort and not get both the benefits in terms of the health benefits as well as the physical body composition change benefits as well? So it's like, well, why not just clean up your routine and clean up your strategy so that you actually see change from all your hard work? Because that's the thing, until you start training to be strong instead of trying to be small, until you start to try and gain strength and start to build muscle instead of constantly just trying to make your body smaller and smaller and to become a smaller version of yourself, you're never going to become a toned fit gym girly. This is literally the recipe of skinny fat. Like I see it all the time. There's a a person that walks into the gym that is like toned and fit and like got, you know, you can see visible abs and, you know, you can see their glute shape and their shoulders and they just like, they look aesthetic and they look really fit. And then so many people believe that in order to get a physique that looks like that, they have to lose weight on the scale. They just have to lose more weight, more body fat and burn more calories with their exercise. Because if I burn more, if I'm in a smaller body, all of a sudden my muscles will be popping and I'll look like these fit people. But the thing is, is that if you want a toned and fit physique, you need to build muscle. And if you have never gone through a phase of intentionally coming out of a calorie deficit to build muscle, then anytime you just lose more weight, you're still going to be unhappy with what your body looks like because you're still going to be skinny fat. And that's the thing. When you build muscle, you don't have to sit at such a low body fat percentage in order to look toned. Because you have muscles sitting underneath the body fat, so you have much more shape to your body. 
if you don't go through that phase of muscle building or body recomposition, you have to get to such low, low, low body fat percentages in order to see any sort of muscle tone. And then the problem lies with that is that because you have such a low percentage of body fat, it's actually not healthy for your hormones, especially as a female. If our body fat drops too low, this actually has a negative effect on our reproductive hormones. So our body fat percentage actually affects our reproductive hormones. If our body fat percentage is too low, it then interrupts our menstrual cycle. So one, under eating and getting to that low percentage of body fat in terms of really getting like eating in a calorie deficit for extended long period of time and then getting to that really low body fat percentage. Both of those things together is going to impact your period. And if you don't have a period, red flag, red flag, red flag, you need to do something about that because if we don't have a period, then it has flow on effects into our health. It impacts our bone mineral density. It impacts our cardiovascular health. It impacts our mental health. It increases the likelihood of depression, anxiety, right? So it's so much more than our bodies just looking a certain way. This is our health that we're talking about. And that's just it. It's like we don't have to get to these really low body fat percentages to look toned if you take the time to build muscle, if you take the time to body recomp, if you take freaking time out of your calorie deficit, okay? So signs that you're here, signs that your exercise routine is off. First one, you're saying things like, I train so often. I'm training four plus times a week, sometimes even, you know, five, six, seven times a week. Yet my muscles don't look toned and I don't look like I work out. Second sign is you try and stick to a calorie deficit but you just end up binge eating, binge restricting. The next sign is that you're plateaued with your lifts. You're lifting, but there's a certain weight that you just can't get over. Maybe it's 40 kilo deadlift, you just can't push past it. Maybe it's a 40 kilo squat and you just can't get over it. Every single time you go and try and beat it, you just can't. Another sign that you're here is that you've got constant flare ups with your hip pain, your back pain, maybe it's shoulder pain, maybe it's knee pain, but there's constant niggling injuries that just won't go away. And yes, maybe they go away for a little bit, but then they come back. And then of course, signs that you're here is that you lost weight, you keep losing weight on the scale, you know, you lose weight by restricting yourself, cutting out carbohydrates, maybe you're having protein and heaps of veggies. But every time you lose weight, you still don't look like the way that you want. You still don't look like a tone fit gym girly, which can feel fucking disheartening, right? Like you're putting in so much effort and like you're restricting yourself. You tell yourself you're going to be good. You stop going out for dinner, stop having takeaways, you stop having alcohol and then you lose weight and then, well, you're still not happy with your body. So then what do you do? You go back into your old ways of being and start including all these things again and all of a sudden you've just put the weight back on. So it's this constant little vicious cycle of losing weight, putting it back on without ever seeing any actual body composition changes, which is how you break free of that skinny fat cycle. So if you're here, I fully see you in this because this is like, it was my journey for so freaking long. It was my journey of like, you know, really wanting to get a toned physique. I wanted to look athletic. I wanted to look fit. But forever, I was just so focused on weight loss. I was so focused on making myself smaller. I was so focused on getting to a certain size because that's in my head. I thought that's what I had to do in order to get a toned physique. I thought just losing more weight was going to get me there. But... Oh my God, I was so wrong It's because I was stuck in this same cycle, right? I was so stuck in this cycle because I'd never intentionally gone out of my way to go eat out of a calorie deficit. Oh my God, because I was so deeply rooted in the fear of weight gain. I was so deeply rooted in fear of eating more because I was so afraid of gaining weight. I was so afraid of gaining fat. Because in my head, that's what I linked it to, right? Like if I increase my calories, then I'm going to get fat. I'm going to gain weight. It was never, if I increase my calories, I'm going to gain muscle, which is actually what I needed to do in order to get a tone physique. 
And this is why inside the Fit and Pray Academy is this is why I focus on this is because everyone's talking about the calorie fucking deficit. Everyone's talking about fat loss, right? Like you see all over TikTok, it's like, yeah, lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. It's like, well, there is a good chunk of women who don't need to lose weight. They actually need to build muscle and they've got no fucking idea. And that's it. It's like you go through a calorie deficit and you're still not happy. And then you're like, well, what the fuck? (laughs) And then you just end up putting it back on. So this is why the Fit and Free Academy is focusing on body recomping. This is why I'm teaching girls how to come out of calorie deficit and not gain fat, but actually put on muscle and lose body fat. So they really see change in their body composition. I remember when I was, you know, going to freaking group fitness and doing these fucking 12 week challenges. Holy shit, I honestly believe, I've done a whole episode on this to why I think they should be illegal, but literally like, let's be real, it's like a binge restrict fucking cycle. Literally, look, you can't eat out for 12 weeks, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you have to stick to this meal plan. Of course you're going to fucking see results, right? Of course, and you're in a a group of people who are all doing the same thing. We're all sticking to this plan together. It turns into a competition. Then don't even get me started, right? We get on that in-body scan at the start to see how much we weigh, what our body composition is. But if you're anything like me, I was only focused on what that scale said. I was only focusing on the weight and what the weight was for me. Because in my head, I was like, I need to make that weight go down. Because if I make that weight go down, then I am going to be toned. (laughs) And because I was running from this belief, it was like, well... I have to do everything in my power during this 12 week challenge to get this body scan down in weight. So of course, then I was like, well, my exercise is going to be a reflection of that. I need to make myself smaller. So therefore I need to burn as many calories as possible. I need to go into these sessions and push as hard as I possibly can. I need to go in and to do these hit sessions with minimal rest. I need to like bust my guts. I need to be sweaty. I need to be like walking out being like far out. That was hard. And it's so wild and it's so crazy that I can sit here and reflect back on that and being like, holy shit, because I was doing all of those things with my exercise was the reason why I was not breaking free from skinny fat. The reason why I was not toning up, the reason why I didn't have definition in my glutes, legs and abs, because all that was doing is just losing weight. And in terms of losing weight, it was losing weight in the form of muscle and fat. So why was all of this a problem, right? So group fitness number one is you going in and you're doing something different like every single time you go in. And we know the number one what mechanism to change your body composition is lifting weights and applying progressive overload. And the only way to apply progressive overload is if you're doing the same thing over and over again and slightly beating it. So how are you ever going to apply progressive overload if you're going into the gym and doing something different every single time? It's next to impossible. And that's the same goes for things like hit classes, Pilates classes, any sort of class, say, because you lack that consistency, there is no ability to apply progressive overload. How progressive overload works is you go into the gym and say you're doing back squats, right? You do your back squats, you do 10 reps. Then what happens is that that actually creates damage in your muscles. Then you need the protein and the rest to repair it, okay? So then because the muscles have adapted to that new stimulus, then you need to go in the next week and do it again, but it needs to be harder because the muscles have adapted to the stimulus from the week before, right? So if you're going in and doing like the same thing or a completely different exercise, then your body doesn't have that natural adaption process. So therefore your muscles are not going to change, right? It's that overload, that increase in intensity the following week that is creating the change within the muscles. So not only are like Pilates classes and group fitness classes all missing this element of progressive overload, they're also missing training your muscles at the right intensity to give them a reason to change. Because when we get into these mentalities of like more is better, like we have to race through the stations, we have to do as many reps as possible, we have to not have rest periods. What happens is the body can only train at a certain intensity for a period of time, right? And if we keep going and going and going without resting, then the body is not going to catch a break. 
And therefore, the intensity over time is just going to go boom, down. So as we go on, we can't push as hard. We can't train as hard. And we just get really tired and we get really fatigued. Right? We know from the research, in order to actually change our muscle size, we need to be pushing our muscles under tension at about an eight, seven, six, six to eight out of 10 intensity across our session. And yes, why while like doing these long sessions without rest may feel like we're training at a really high intensity, what actually is happening is because we're not resting and we're not stopping, our cardiovascular system is actually firing and it's like we're dying at that eight out of 10 intensity. We feel like we need to rest because we're like, this is so hard, but it's often that the cardiovascular system is working so hard, like we can't breathe, we can't keep going, it turns more into a cardio exercise rather than putting enough strain and pressure through the muscles, right? It's like that whole thing about doing burpees and doing jump squats. It's like, what's the reason why you stop going? It's because you can't fucking breathe. So, (laughs) and then we're like, well, I'm working so hard. I'm really sweaty. I'm huffing and puffing. I'm like killing myself on these ski ergs and bikes. But I'm like, yeah, my body doesn't look like I work out. I'm not toned. I don't see the muscle definition. Well, how are we ever going to have muscle definition if we keep busting our cardiovascular system and not actually working our muscles at the right intensity? So at the end of these challenges, I always saw results, right? I saw results because I cut out everything. I was like, oh, I'm not eating out. I'm increasing my training. I'm following a strict meal plan. So of course, I did see results. If you cut out everything of your life and you are really rigid, yeah, of course you're going to see results. But then what happens when it's all over? What happens when you go back to your old ways of being and when you haven't actually learned how to change your habits or you've learned is how to stick to something really strictly? Like, and that's the difference, right? And this is why people get it so wrong. It's like they have this motivation burst being like, yeah, I'm going to do this challenge. I'm going to do this diet. I'm going to be really strict. But it's like, well, yeah, anyone can lose weight if they cut out all their favorite foods. Anyone can lose weight if they just cut out carbs. The flex is if you can do it with enjoying all your favorite foods <laughs> and it's until you can and learn how to do that until you actually learn how to change your habits and learn until you learn how to have a healthy relationship with food and until you learn your to train to get stronger instead of smaller is when you're going to be successful with your body long term. So what is the point, right? So what is the point of putting in so much effort with your exercise and end up at square one each and every time? Just end up at skinny fat end up not seeing the actual change in your body composition you're just left feeling deflated and feeling like nothing is working and you feel like you put in so much work for little results literally can feel like you're running on a hamster wheel you're staying in the same spot exactly the same place so it's like why not use the calories why not learn how to eat what you want when you want it and why don't you learn how to train that actually sees change in your body so that you actually see results from all your hard work so how the hell do you start training to be strong instead of small well first of all i will always say it's like well why do you feel like you need to be smaller why do you think losing weight on the scale is going to get you where you, where you want to be And then we just have to look at our beliefs in and around like lifting weights and what strong means is because I know for a few people, they jump to the conclusion that, oh, if I look strong, then I'm going to be bulky. There's this whole conversation about freaking being bulky when you lift weights. Like if you're there, I see you, but we need to move through this because it's not true. Like, yeah, like if you look at CrossFitters like Tia Toomey and you look at them and you look at their exercise routine and they're like, well, fuck, they're lifting weights and I'm going to look like that. Well, no, (laughs) if you want to look bulky and you want to look big and you want to look like all the gym bros is you need to be eating in a calorie surplus. You need to probably be taking roids and you need to be doing it for two years. Right. And that's it. It's like, it's actually really hard to build muscle. Like initially you can get effects of body recomp, like fuck yeah, let's do that. But then after you've been training for a while, it actually gets harder to build muscle. So as females, like we need to normalize that you're not going to get bulky. You're going to feel stronger. Life becomes easier. You have better posture. You have a faster metabolism. You have better bone mineral density. You have, you can eat more. Like there are so many benefits to building muscle. Yet we shy away from it because we have these beliefs and these fears that, oh my God, I'm going to look bulky. 
Well, what if it actually was you are going to look leaner, you're going to look more athletic and you're going to feel more empowered. I know what YouTube channel I'm subscribing to. So how do we start to be strong? So number one, of course, is always looking at our beliefs in and around being smaller, why we don't want to, like why we are burning calories, why we are acting in this way. And we also have to always look at like um, your relationship with yourself and your sense of your relationship with your body in terms of, are you operating from a place of like, I will only be happy if my body is smaller And I always like to bring this into the conversation is because like that's where I was and I know so many people have their worth so highly attached to their body and it becomes such a problem because it turns into such sabotaging cycles if people like they start and then all of a sudden they're not there yet and it just triggers the shit out of them because like, oh my God, I'm pathetic. I'm a failure. I'm you know, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm not there yet, I'm never going to be there. And we just fall into these such toxic negative cycles um, in and around our nutrition and exercise. And that's why one of the biggest components of the Fit and Pro Academy is like module four is body image. We go so deep into body image and working on our self-worth and detaching it from our body is because like if we're constantly running from the place of I need to be smaller in order to be happy, my body needs to be smaller in order to be enough then forget about even thinking about being able to stick to changing your exercise plan long term because yeah you'll initially you'll start it and you'll start you know you're lifting weights but then something may trigger you maybe it's a a pair of shorts maybe it's your reflection in the mirror and then you're just going to go straight back into old patterns of running you're going to go back into old patterns of working off your food of thinking that you need to do more Right, so that's why I always have that conversation and bring that into people's awareness is that it's absolutely something that so many people need to work on in order again to remain consistent with the right types of exercise and their nutrition. So, moving through the mindset piece, of course, I will always talk about mindset because it's so freaking important. But now let's talk more strategy stuff. So, the first one is, of course, is your lift weights. We know in order to increase the size of our muscles to build muscle, we need to lift weights. And like lifting weights in the gym, ideally, like, because like you can lift weights at home, but at the same time, it's like, well, there's going to be a point where you need more equipment because you're going to get too strong for body weight. You're going to get too strong for a couple of dumbbells. So that's why it's really important to be doing this in the gym. Or if you don't have a gym, it's totally fine to be training at home. As long as like, you've got the setup, you've got barbells, you've got dumbbells, you've got all the equipment to making sure that you can continue to get stronger. Because if you reach a plateau at home and you don't have more equipment to apply progressive overload, then you're going to also plateau with your body composition changes. So we know we need to lift weights. We know we need to apply progressive overload. And I've already spoken to that. The next thing that you need to be really mindful of and really be thinking about if you're wanting to change your body composition and do the right type of exercise is your volume. Is how many exercises that you're actually doing in a session. So many people, I see this all the time, is they, you know, they throw in like 10 exercises into their resistance training session and they're just doing so much volume when you don't actually need to do that. And doing extra like that is actually probably moving you further away from your goal because extra volume like that requires more recovery. We know if you're not recovering from your exercise sessions, then you're not going to see good gains. And this is this thing called junk volume, right? People think that they need to do all this volume in order to get gains when actually what would help them better is actually doing less volume but the ones that they do is and more intense. Research states that you only need 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week, right? And for someone who is like newish to strength training, like you would go on the lower end of that volume because you can get really good gains with doing, you know, 10 to 12 sets per week. And what does that look like, right? So let's think about it like this. So let's talk about the quadriceps, right? So three times 10 squats, three times 10 leg press, three times 10 leg extensions, three times 10 lunges. That's 12 sets of quads in a week. Like that's all you need to do. You don't need to be doing all this excessive volume because like I already said, it 
if you're doing so much excess volume, your body's not going to be able to handle it and recover from it. And if you're not recovering, then you're not going to be able to apply progressive overload because you don't have that adaptation. It's not repairing itself to then being able to handle a stronger load. There's lack of that repair in the middle and therefore you can't lift heavier. Right? So what more people would actually benefit from is doing less sets, having longer rest periods so that they can train at a higher intensity during their sets. And this is where people get it so wrong is they're not utilizing their rest periods. And I, I'm guilty of this as well. Like last year, I was not taking my rest periods as seriously as I should have been because as soon as I started implementing longer rest periods in between my sets, I'm talking like I sit there for like three minutes now, is then I, when I go and do my set, I can push so much harder. One thing I do have to say though, is like when you're going through a beginner phase of lifting, like we do have to acknowledge that the first year of lifting is building a skill. Like your coordination might tap out before your intensity taps out. What I mean by that is that like to do a deadlift, like you have to learn how to do a deadlift properly, right? You need to learn how to hinge at the hips. You need to learn how to engage your hamstrings, your glutes. You need to learn how to brace your upper back. You need how to brace your core, right? You need to learn how to push up through your heels and really get into like making sure you're using your glutes and hamstrings to come up into hip extension, right? It's a whole thing. So we do have to just be aware to that in terms of like during the first, you know, first year of lifting, like you might not be able to be pushing to these next level intensities because we're still just building the skill. Okay. So I do want to say that, but at the same time, it's like, okay, we need to build this skill and we need to build the skill of training at a higher intensity in terms of lifting heavier. It absolutely is a skill. And this is why it does take time to really get really good body composition changes. Because like at the end of the day, the stronger that you are is correlated to how much muscle you have and how dense your body is. And if you're struggling with technique and you're struggling with constant niggles and you're struggling with pain, then like all of those things have to sort of subside in order to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And we know the stronger we are, the more dense we're going to be, the more athletic we're going to look at any given body weight. Why? Because muscle is more dense than fat tissue. And we know in order to get more muscle, we need to be lifting heavier and constantly challenging the body and adapting, adapting, adapting. Right. So I know I digressed a little bit there, but for those who are, you know, you've been consistent with your exercise and you've got your lifts down pat and you know what you're doing. It's like your rest periods are so, so important so that you can train at a higher intensity the next set. And if you're not utilizing that rest and if you're not, well, number one, if you're not needing the rest, you're not lifting heavy enough. And number two, if you're not utilizing your rest periods to actually sit there and rest and, you know, get excited about your next lift, then that's also going to be impacting your results as well. What I personally love to do is I film myself in the gym. Like everything I do, I film everything to look at my technique. And that's what I do in my rest periods all of the time is I sit there and I watch myself. I watch my videos to making sure that I'm doing it right. Um, and that can be a really good way to like to utilize the time in between your sets. And it's a good way to time it as well, because it's like, well, the video is, you know, two minutes. So I'll sit there. Of course, I'll fast forward it. But, um, but it's a good thing in between to, you know, making sure you're doing it right. And as well as um, making sure that you're forcing yourself to have that rest time. So really, really good. Um, the next thing is I will speak to form. It's really important. Form should always come overload. We know that. Um, working on your form, whether that's filming yourself and working with a coach to get that technique, because the better form that we have, the more we're going to be able to lift. And again, again, even though I just said it, I'll say it again, the stronger we are, the better body composition changes we're going to get in terms of more muscle and less fat. So form is such a big one and it's so underrated. And especially when it comes to form is bracing. Learning how to brace your core efficiently is a skill that everyone needs to continue work on. It's something that I'm constantly saying to a lot of my girls. It's like bracing, bracing, bracing. We need to make sure hips to ribs, really bracing and like getting punched in the stomach and learning how to build your core strength. Because it's like people think that they need to do all these core exercises on top of what they're doing. But actually, if you learn how to brace your core efficiently and effectively, then your every single exercise you do is a core exercise. 
and you will feel it. Like yesterday in the gym, I was doing good mornings and that is like one of the best core exercises that you can do. <laughs> it fires your core so hard and you need to have the biggest, strongest brace in order to keep yourself, your core nice and stable. So instead of doing, like if you're throwing in crunches and all this stuff, it's like, well, learn how to brace your core properly in your compound lifts because you're going to get a more, you know, you're going to build more muscle in your core when you're actually doing that. And think about it, like you're progressively overloading, right, with your lift. So therefore your core is also being put under more strain every single time you increase your weight, especially if you know how to brace it properly. So really working on that is also going to really help you um, see really good changes in your body composition. Plus working on your bracing and your core is going to allow you to lift heavier. It's going to allow you to squat more, deadlift more, bent over row more like all of it it's going to really help you increase your lifts and we know say it again sound like a broken record now is the more that we can lift the stronger we'll be the better body composition changes we'll have so yes i could keep going on with so many more things but i'm going to wrap it up here these are things that i could keep going on and on and let me know if you want to know more in terms of this sort of stuff because i um could go on and on about this in terms of training but I am going to wrap it up here. So guys, I want you to really reflect in and around your routine, your strategy with your nutrition and exercise. And you know, what is the, how are you feeling with it? Like, are you getting the results from what you're doing? And have a reflect on if there's something that you need to change in order to make it better. Maybe it's you need to time your rest periods. Maybe it's you need to come out of a calorie deficit and actually eat at maintenance and focus on body recomp and build some muscles. Maybe it's you need to work on your form. You need to work on your bracing. Maybe it's you need to monitor your recovery. Maybe it's you need to look at how many exercises you're actually doing in your session, right? Because it's like, like I said at the beginning, like why do show up every day and like why put in so much effort with not seeing the result that you want? Anyway, thank you for being here. I love you always and I will see you next week. number one challenge that all my clients face before we start working together is a lack of clarity on how much and what to eat to lose weight. Often they are making two huge mistakes, constantly trying to skip meals or eat under 1600 calories. Secondly, only allowing themselves bad foods like chocolate on the weekend, but end up binging all to tell themselves they're going to start again on Monday. If you feel like you have tried every diet under the sun and still can't figure out what to eat to achieve your weight loss goals take my free two minute quiz you can find the link in the show notes down below and it will help you figure out exactly what you're doing wrong with your nutrition and exercise and exactly what to do to fix it so that you can finally be confident in your body and achieve your weight loss goals